IP. 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 Welcome to IP series, home to all things IP related, where I give you the stories, tips, and implications to business and creative decision concerning your intangible assets with real life case study. I am your host, Rita Henry Chinda. Subscribe and turn on your notification so you don't miss an episode. Cheers, guys. Now, before I get into our story for today, if you haven't listened to the last 107 episode, Edjo Biko, please help your girl. Huh? Just help me. But yeah, earlier this month, Max Ekombe, who is my mentor of life and a source of inspiration, tagged me on the post after he had shared the link to the story um, involving Coca Cola Nigeria being asked to pay compensation or damages of 3,000, sorry, 3 million naira, which is equivalent to $4,000 based on our exchange rate. And he was like, at Amri, I await your usual masterpiece, the section of such trendy IP news. And then it was like, oh, oh my God. You know, and this is like the second case that Matt has actually drawn my attention to. So I said to take my time. <laughs> I said to take my time and you know do an in-depth research about the case what is it that every other person is really not focusing on and i read up two things first is what copyright might be like the prevailing um ip to discuss there were other salient issues that were raised um in the course of you know the publication that i've come across not seeing the judgment so my research and my response to um max's request is based on what i have seen in the public domain so the second one is breach of confidence and one thing that struck me is that these two type of ips um basically enjoy some sort of automatic protection from the moment it's created um you know while breach of confidence my um, transfer obligation to the person receiving it to take extra precaution to protect the information come on copyright is just there i've created it i've put it out there and they are kind of like a bit more vulnerable so what this tells you then is as an ip owner whether as a creative or an inventor you need to explore multi-tiered um ip protection then after i had shared the carousels on linkedin i got a comment that <clears throat> you know apologies guys i got a comment from aban miracle and it also kind of made me i mean i was going to look at it in passing but when he asked me the question i decided to take a second look at it and the question goes towards um so he says it's a very clear case of ip infringement my concern is what would be the procedure of calculating the profit made from the use of the calendar in their publication now if you go through both the old copyright act and the new copyright act it wasn't expressly stated how you can do that i just feel that as an ip attorney what you may come up with is just to have like a smart ip strategy by either relying on you know under the new law you're relying on the four factor formula um and the non-commercial purpose test, which is whether it was for private use and whatnot. But yeah, let's get into our story. Headline news. Quotes, orders Coca-Cola Nigeria to pay three million naira to onile maroon for copyright infringement that was it and i was like okay let's take it so the story goes that the young man in question had at some point maybe they had some sort of discussion 
about the calendar work in the Ramadan timing for done meals and breaking of fasting in Kwara State sometime in 2014 and 2015, uh, or maybe prior to that. But the infringement took place afterwards and it was the timeline was between 2014 and 2015. And you know, per usual, every creative will be first upset, which is like the initial reaction. And they decided to seek the opinion of their lawyer who eventually filed a lawsuit against Coca-Cola and Nigeria Bottling Company, NBC. And they asked so some of the others or the relief they sought was first is an award of damages of 10 million naira against Coca-Cola and Nigerian Bottling Company, NBC, for the unauthorized or um, unauthorized reproduction publishing and distribution of his copyright work in the Ramadan timing for dawn news and breaking of fasting for Quara State in 2014 without his consent, license or an assignment. I will know that when you're talking about intellectual property, without any of these things, you are alleged to be infringing on someone's creative work or inventive work. Second, they're asking for an account of profit that Coca-Cola and NBC have made between 29th June 2014, 28th July 2014, and 17th June 2015, and 16th July 2015. And I think this is what attracted Aban when he asked me that question. And we're going to get into it. Thirdly, they were asking for, for um, an award of damages of 10 million naira against coca-cola and nbc for breach of confidence of secret information and secret ideas so i'm just going to pause there ideas do not enjoy copyright protection ideas do not enjoy intellectual property protection let's get that in out of the way first before we start going but yeah he accused them for breaching you know the confidence he had in them when he shared his um ramadan timetable with them so he's accusing them of using that information to produce the coca-cola alluring ramadan timing june slash july 2015 um by way of unlawfully reproducing publishing substantial similarities of his work so his work in question now is the Ramadan timing of dawn news and break fast, breaking up fast for Quora State in 2015 without his consent. And, I mean, for someone to sit and even think of something like that, it just shows that the person has put in a lot of effort. He has thought about it and like, how am I actually going to make a difference in, in you know, this religious time? Um, next, he was asking for um, an order sharing to him um another sharing profit of 40 percent made by coca-cola and nbc between 29 june 2014 28 july 2014 17 june 2015 and 16 july sorry yeah so 16 july 2015 mm-hmm. and finally she's like my favorite re- relief ever is an award of cost of his action against the defendant and i think this is where the court now awarded three million i really do hope someone will share the judgment so i can actually properly go through it and be abreast of what really happened but these are like you know public information you'll find online if you do a google search then as usual the defendants which are coca-cola and nbc denied that um the work in question was not um, any a literary work that enjoys copyright protection. They also went ahead to say that um, for a work to be eligible for copyright, it must be original. So under the order that it was found under section one sub two, um, where sufficient effort must have been expanded on making the work have an original character. I mean, for someone to think about creating a Ramadan timetable for breaking up fast. That shows you that it is original and that sufficient effort was put in. Kudos to to Onile. Kudos to the guy who actually came up with this. I mean, it's not easy. So his name is Abdul Mominin Onile Maroon. I apologize if I did not pronounce the name well. Please forgive me. 
um but yeah so they also the the, uh, the council representing coca-cola and nbc stated that there was no evidence before the court that the original work was published by the claim at which they allegedly bagged it i mean every copyright lawyer or intellectual property lawyer knows the basic when it comes to copyright copyright grants you automatic protection from the moment you transform or transfer your ideas into a fixed or tangible medium of expression such as the, the calendar work that abdul mominin onile marion created come on anyways they never went to tell the court that they were granted the license now under the former copyright act what the law provided for i think it was section 11 yes section 11 if it's a license and it's a, an exclusive one it has to be in writing if it's not an exclusive or non-exclusive where you can give several persons the right to use in this case now the ramadan calendar for breaking of fast by your actions it can be implied by your action it can be oral it can be written but if it's an exclusive license such which i will assume this is it then it's definitely that it should be in writing now they stated that the claimant who is abdul mominin onile maroon had given them consented or had given them the approval to commercially exploit the work and voluntarily assume the risk what does that even mean what does that even mean seriously i mean anyways so <laughs> so we're still on to the case now i think i'm just, I'm just going to cut through um, one of the publications then they concluded by stating that um there was no agreement or contemplation or agreement for compensation because the calendar were not used for any economic purpose for but for the educational purpose of the muslim community during the time of ramadan ah i mean even under this the old act we had under the second schedule there were provisions as to what would fall under non-commercial use and then under the new act is found under section 20 of the act and it's very detailed for for a brand like that i don't think relying on that they you know the calendar was for economic or educational purpose i mean it won't really fly you guys can afford it you know and thankfully the george you know listened to both parties and he raised only one issue, which was whether the plaintiff's claim of copyright has been proved to deserve protection and be entitled to relief. So he further held that Abdul Mominim Onile Maru suit, which is the lawsuit which he filed, is founded based on his literary work, um, Ramadan timing for Don Mills for breaking or fasting for Quara State and he relied on the old act section 20 section 51 which was the interpretation act to define literary works to include novels stories and poetical works letters reports and memorandas lectures addresses and sermons and written tables of compilation now he goes further to say from the above definition a compilation of the ramadan timing for don mills for breaking of of fasting for Quara State is a literary work, and I so hold. Now he went goes further again to say that the NBC's argument and Coca Cola's argument that the copyright that you need a copyright certificate that so sorry they said that the copyright certificate of the plaintiff that is Abdul now does not protect any literary work as none was submitted to the Nigerian Copyright Commission. So one interesting thing about the new copyright act that I actually like is that. Um, the, the words they used was a copyright owner may register their work as under section 84. Let me construct. Let me let me verify that. So I'm not misleading anyone. But yeah, what the law uses there is may. You may register your work. So their argument again is, you know, I do agree with me, Lord, in this. So it goes to say um it is strike that registration of copyright is not a precondition to the protection 
of the copyright work and then he listed the case which i asterisk i was going to read later for my own personal review and education and research and then he goes to say more so section one sub two paragraph a requires a party to prove that he has expanded effort into the work etc 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 so in conclusion coca-cola and nbc shall pay the guys 30 million i mean i have a couple of colleagues who had stated that the sum was little i mean it, it i would i would always tell people that when you when you have a matter in court it's how you present your case and when it comes to computations and you know court giving their verdict on award the court is basically not father christmas it's not santa he is not santa you get it yeah so another section that me lord we relied to under the old act was section six sub one paragraph a sub one which talks about the exclusive rights entitled to a literary work now what i'm going to do going forward is do a comparison of what the old copyright act provides in terms of the bundle of exclusive rights for literary work and if you look at this case three rights were highlighted which is the right to reproduce a literary work the right to distribute a literary work and the right to actually publish a literary work now for my own evaluation i highlighted four areas that i would be reviewing the first one is copyright infringement the second one is breach of confidence of secret information in the making of accurate ramadan timetable number three is infringement of substantial similarities of his method and the copyrighted work and finally sharing of 40 percent of total profit made by nbc and coca-cola in quara state between june 2014 and july 2015. so i'm going to start with saying that one thing i do like or appreciate about the new copyright act 2022 is that now the law clearly states that you do not require any kind of formality for your copyrighted work to be eligible now now that that has been clarified and we've identified that the ramadan calendar falls under the literary work which is an eligible work under the copyright act both the old act and the new act we're going to proceed to look at the bundle of exclusive right now if you recall previously i stated that under the old act you could find that under section 6 sub 1 paragraph a now we're going to focus on three which is the right to publish the work the right to distribute the work and the right to actually reproduce the work in any material form now under the new acts of 2022 what the law states is for copyright and literary work you should have the exclusive right to do and authorize the following so you see that consent permission and authorization is very important you really cannot do away from it because it imposes some sort of obligation at the general public to exclude the copyright owner or to exclude the general public from exercising any of those acts that are restricted to just the copyright owner and this is where a copyright owner would get his power to or as a basis to commercialize and exploit their um, creativity such as licensing which mbc and coca-cola had alluded to that they had gotten which in reality they never did now same thing for section 9 you also say to reproduce the work to publish the work and then distribute the work to the public for commercial purposes copies of the work through sale or other transfer of ownership provided the work has not been subject to distribution authorized 
by the public now if you have seen the carousel which i created i went as far as making or doing an explanation on what will classify or fall on that or the explanation on you know these exclusive rights that i listed in my presentation so let's start with the simplest one for me which is the right to just hold on guys <laughs> which is the right to reproduce now that right gives you the opportunity to make copies or recording of your work in a way such as photocopying or scanning now i i wish that um because of the publication they had shared how mbc and coca-cola had uh, you know reproduce the calendar then right to to publish gives one the legal authority to actually publish copies of the work which only pertains to the initial placement of a copy in commercial circulation and finally right to distribute is the right to rent or lend copies of the work to the public which um Mr. Abdul had stated that NBC and the Coca-Cola was responsible to, was responsible for rather. Now let's move on to licensing. Yeah, licensing was was stated now under the old act. When you talk about licensing, yeah, the law provided for then stated that. An assignment or testimony dis the disposition of copyright may be limited to as to apply to some of the acts. So even when you are assigning your license, your your rights, you're not giving the person the right to actually um, do perform all the rights, such as um, the right to republish, to pro to reproduce or distribute. You're just giving them some. So in this case, if Mr. Abdul had actually um, opted to give had opted to give his consent to NBC and Coca-Cola would have been oh you have the right to publish this to the public or distribute it to the public or to reproduce as a case maybe not all of that bundle of exclusive right now exclusive right under the new act is defined as a license signed by or on behalf of a copyright owner authorizing the licensing and the licensing in this case would be NBC and coca-cola to the exclusion of every other person including the person granting the license to exercise any right which would otherwise be exercisable exclusively by the copyright owner whereas a license is defined as lawfully granting license permitting the doing of an act controlled by this act nine under the older section 11 sub three says that no assignment of copyright or no exclusive right to do an act shall be controlled by copyright or doing of that which con which is controlled by copyright shall have effect unless it's in writing so if they were claiming that mr abdul had as has licensed the ramadan calendar it had to have been in writing else it's not binding and it has no effect as we have seen in the old act whereas under section 30 which talks about assignments yeah it talks about assignment and licensing um it states that for the purpose of chapter 4 of the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria 1999 it's very important that as nigerians we need to be abreast with what the constitution provides and under that it states that um, copyright shall be deemed to be a movable property and shall be transferred by way of assignment testimony disposition or operation of the law and as we can see from what we've seen online anyways that wasn't done um similar provisions under section 30 sub 3 as i read in section 11 sub 3 um uh, then sub 5 states that okay this is with co-owner or co-owner relationship sub seven states that ownership of a material in which your work is embedded shall not confer ownership 
of copyright in the work except that's me otherwise be provided for in an agreement an owner of copyright who transferred the ownership of the material in which the work is embodied shall not be deemed to have transferred his copyright or to have granted a license for the exploitation of his work um, except as may otherwise be provided for an agreement and owner of copyright who transfers his copyright or grants a license for the exploitation of the work shall not be deemed to have also transferred the ownership of the material in which the work is embodied now sub 10 of section 30 of the copyright act now states that an assignment or license or testimony dis- disposition may be granted or made in respect of future work or an existing work in which copyright does not subsist, provided that it shall not be permitted to transfer the rights in all future works of an author. I hope that makes sense. Yeah? So I was also going to look at um, compulsory license to publish and to publish and produce translation. But I don't think this required any form of translation. So I'm just going to go to section 29 of the new act which talks about ownership of copyright of of collective work oh no i shouldn't be doing that rather section 28 yeah we talked about first ownership of copyright now it states that unless it was provided in an agreement copyright shall be conferred by this act initially to the first author which are not all as defined under the interpretation section will depend on the type of intellectual property um, in this case then what is one thing i was going to look out for is the right to claim authorship um which section 12 of the former acts today that author of the work shall have the right to claim authorship of his work in particular that his authorship be in, indicated in connection with any of the act provided for in section 6 except where the work is included incidentally or accidentally when reporting current event by means of broadcasting and this was no current event you know um, they also have the right to object and to seek relief in connection with any distortion mutilation or other modification and any other derivative action in relation to this work where the work would be or is prejudicial to his honor or reputation and it goes further to state that this law the rights are perpetual inalienable and imprescriptible so let's look at what the provisions of the law is now on author's moral right. So under section 12 of the former act, it was like merged together. But under the new act now, um, they distinguished it. So the bond of exclusive right, which we talked about for literary work under section 9, will focus on the economic right, which gives a literary um work owner the right to commercialize or exploit his work for economic benefits such as the right to reproduce the right to publish the right to distribute and i'm focusing on these three bundles of right because this is where the alleged infringement that or the infringement that nbc and coca-cola carried out whereas moral right gives you the opportunity to claim authorship of the work um to object and seek relief which is kind of similar to what section 12 of the act stated then it goes further to say a person has the right to object to what being falsely attributed to him as the author that wasn't provided for in the you know former act then it goes further to also states that the right conferred here shall not be transmissible during the life of the author that wasn't also provided for in the former act you know so you cannot transfer your moral rights as long as you are alive and even upon your death, you it it can only upon the death of the other be transmissible by testimony disposition or by operation of law. So it will in this case. The rights conferred on this shall be subject to the duration of the copyright in the work, which wasn't the case, you know. It wasn't the case. Under the old act, section 12 substitutes as the rights referred to in subsection one are perpetual. 
whereas under the new act now this moral right will last for the duration of the copyright so copyright for literary work um that's for the lifetime of the copyright owner plus 70 years after you know then um let's talk about the right to share in proceeds of sale i don't know because i'm kind of i want to start from the list and then build up to like my highlight which is the bridge of confidential information So let's discuss how a copyright owner can share in the proceeds of sale in the event where you decide that you want to sell your copyrighted work. What does or what did, first of all, the old copyright act provide? And the, the old copyright act listed a couple of things. It said, notwithstanding any assignment or sale of original work, the author, all graphic works, three-dimensional works and manus manuscripts to have an inalienable right to share in the proceeds of any sale of that work or manuscript by public auction or through a what about the method they used by the latter to carry out the operation and the right conferred in this section shall apply to originals of such work and it goes further to state that the conditions for exercise of right conferred by such be determined by regulation made by the Nigerian Copyright Commission as established on the, you know, section 34. Then it goes to state, general apply to architectural work or apply that, and this calendar is not an architectural work, and neither is it an applied work. Now, under section 17 of the New York, it's similar but then what caught my attention is that why was listening at the work is stated still of original work an author of an artistic work manuscript of a literary work so would you say or would you consider uh, mr abdul's calendar of the ramadan table to be a manuscript of a literary work think about it guys really think about it it also goes to say that they shall have an inalienable right to share in the process of any sale of that work or manuscript by public auctions or through a dealer how do you then calculate profit made from an unauthorized use of a copyrighted work such as the literary work in our case study first you will determine the profit that was generated from the unauthorized use and subtract the cost that is associated with the use to be able to arrive at that mathematics so if you thought if you thought that as a lawyer you're escaping maths at any point trust me you will not escape maths because there's certain areas of law that will require some sort of calculations that you need to do now there's no definite formula for calculating profit however there are certain possible ways that can be used to determine um how we can arrive at this and first is to calculate the actual damage suffered by the copyright owner as a result of the infringement and i say this because of the conversation i had with a colleague on a whatsapp platform when i shared my views about this case and what's the comment again something about how the judge wasn't fair and i had to let him know that one like you know you need to really consider what was the actual damage that the copyright owner really suffered if coca-cola had not used um abdul's work how much would he have made within that time frame in 2014 june and also in 2015 july another way would be to calculate the profit earned by the infringer from the unauthorized use this will include the gross revenue minus any deductible expenses that the infringer can prove so you see that other than making your requests and your reliefs you need to show and prove to the courts that you actually deserve the profits that you are claiming another way would be to calculate the statutory damage um as the case may be um if whether you need to also take into consideration whether the infringement was willful innocent you know 
and all of those things. Another way is to calculate the profit from an infringement. Um, the actual amount of damages awarded in the suit may vary depending on the facts and circumstances of each case. I hope that makes perfect sense for all my IP friends listening to my conversation today. So I'm just going to add a couple more things with regards to calculating of profit. Now, we're going to talk about the difference between actual damages and statutory damages, especially when you are the owner of a copyrighted work and you're going to be asking the court for some relief. So, the difference is that actual damages are like the real losses, what you actually lost or what you suffered as a result of in this instance coca-cola and NBC's use of your work whereas for statutory damages there's like a fixed amount of compensation that is determined by the law and actual damages can be divided into economic damages and non-economic damages i hope this is not too much jargon for my listeners but let's delve into that conversation too so economic damages are the financial losses that can be calculated and proven such as property damages whereas for non-economic damages they are the intangible losses that are harder to measure such as pain suffering emotional distress and loss of quality of life and as a copyright owner i'm sure that um you know just being in court already with a loss of adjournment date as the case may be and waiting for the final day when the judge will give his judgment you know it might be a little bit stressful for you to deal with then for statutory damages they are awarded in cases where hold on my laptop is in issues okay where were we (laughs) um so for statutory damages they are awarded in cases where actual damages are difficult to prove or insufficient to deter future valuation they are often set by the statutes or the law and do not depend on the actual harm and loss caused by the defendant they are also common in areas such as intellectual property consumer protection disputes etc for in an instance where it's a copyright infringement suit the plaintiff who in this case is abdul can choose to recover either actual damage or statutory damage uh, actual damage in, in, could be as a result of loss of sales or licensing revenue and i think licensing revenue would, would definitely apply to abdul's case because coca-cola and nbc were alleging that he had issued a license to them don't know any writing which is weird um and, and in as a result of that he has lost some money um i hope this this helps you understand the difference between actual and statutory damages if it doesn't you can always send me an email to ipseriesinfo at gmail.com or my dm at ipseries underscore wit underscore esmeraldo esq now the next thing i'm going to be sharing is who actually has the right to share and the proceeds of sale for a literary work now that would depend on ownership of the copyright work ownership can also be determined um where depending on your contract if there is a written contract that can help determine whether or not you own a copyrighted work then you now determine the kind of relationship was it a work for hire was it an employment arrangement were you commissioned so i'm trying to get to the section of the law that is under the new copyright act because under the old copyright act what is stated under section 10 is that um First, it says copyright shall vest in the initial author. 
that is established already. However, if you were commissioned by a person who's not the author's employer under a contract to service or apprenticeship, or you were not so or not having been so commissioned is made in the course of the author's employment, the copyright shall belong in the first instance to the author unless otherwise stipulated in writing under a contract. Then sub three goes further to state that where a literary, artistic, or musical work is made by the author in the course of employment by the proprietor of a newspaper, magazine, or similar periodicals under a contract of service or apprenticeship, as it's as is so made for the purpose of publication in newspaper, magazine, or similar periodical, the said proprietor shall, in the aspect of absence of any agreement to the contrary, be the first owner of the copyright work, and so far as the copyright relates to the publication, you know, long conversation. But now let's look at what the new Copyright Act talks about in terms of authorship. Um, just give me a few seconds. I am close. Oh, I thought I was getting close, but it kind of feels like I'm far off. But, hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'm still trying to get to the section that I talked about. Uh, what was I talking about again? Yeah, what's created in the work of employment. Mm. Why is it that it's when you actually need something that you start to, you know. So work in this case will also include literary and artistic work in the form of text, notation or related illustrations that are available. Mm, yeah, that's on the section 28 sub 2 of the Copyright Act of 2022. It says, when a person in the absence of an agreement, the contrary creates a work under a contract to service. That's kind of similar, but it then goes ahead to expand it. It says, or the person is in the course of an employment by a government, a ministry, department, or agency, or government of a prescribed international or inter- intergovernmental organization. The copyright in the work shall vest in the government, ministry, department, agency, prescribed, international, or intergovernmental organization. Top three say that, that subject to section, subsection one, we talks about who the original author will be, and subject to any agreement between the parties, where a person for private or domestic purpose, purposes commissions the taking of a photograph or painting or drawing of a portrait i don't think this applies but i'm just going to read it anyway or the making of an audio visual work the person who commissioned the work shall be deemed to have a non-exclusive license to exploit the commission but for non-commercial purposes and entitled to restrain the publication exhibition broadcasting communication distribution and making available of copies through the public in you know, I hope you you guys got that part right yeah so moving on I think I've kind of like talked about everything with regards to profit sharing I'm going to move on to my star conversation which is on copyright protection for confidential information i thought i was going to do that last but i think i'll um before we get there let's just uh, and, okay whatever let's talk about it yeah so for me the, the style of this conversation is not even about the copyright infringement um uh, argument or case but the fact that one should consider uh, protecting their confidential information. Now, what is confidential information in this case? Um, confidential information is any information that is not, you know, in the public domain and has value, commercial value, or potential commercial value to you um, about your business, your customer, your finance, your personal life that if it gets in the wrong hands, it can be misused. It can also be stolen by someone who has ulterior motive. It can also be lit by others who want to harm you or feel like they can benefit from that information getting into the public. So 
you need to take extra precautions and measures to protect your confidential information um, by appropriate means. While breach of confidence uh, would occur where a secret information um, where a secret information which is supposed to be private um, may have been shared, disclosed or communicated to someone in this case Coca-Cola and they ended up using it for unfair advantage to be which will not give rise to a civil claim. Civil claim now is what we are now discussing as as our case study. Now, what are the ways that you can protect your confidential information? I think it will also depend on the type of information first, um, the nature of the information. First one would be contract. I mean, a lot of people may shy away from contract, but okay, let, let, let's redo that list. For me, is once you've identified that your work has commercial value, I would advise that you consider um, do like an evaluation to determine the type of intellectual property right that exists. So let's say you're considering patent. Patent um, for your confidential information can be related to your inventions, your product process method. It also gives you exclusive right for a term of 20 years to use, make, sell and import those inventions within a particular particular jurisdiction. Patent can also prevent other people from copying, imitating or reverse engineering your invention. Then you have trademark. You know that registering your trademark for your confidential information can relate to your brands such as the name, logos, slogans or design. It can also give you the exclusive right to use or license your brand for certain goods or services. It can also prevent other people from using confusingly similar or identical brands that may cause con consumer confusion or dilution of your brand. It also needs to meet the basic requirement of being capable of distinguishing and being distinctive. Uh, whereas for patents, it must be new, novel, not obvious to a skilled person before you start talking about contracts. I mean, that, that's the hierarchy for me anyways. Um, now let's let's go back to contract. Now with contracts, you would have to, you know, need to have all the parties consent to actually um, get into a contract of your offer and acceptance. So you've offered, say, an employee. You've offered, you've got to make a pitch to a supplier, to an investor, or you know, it's with regards to your customer. Your contract must specify the terms and conditions of using your confidential information. I, I had a very funny experience recently. I'm supposed to be sharing confidential information, but the other party thought it wise that it would be best for them to send me an NDA to sign. And I was wondering, I don't know what you guys, what do you guys really think? I mean, I, I kind of came off like, it was like a red flag to me so but i haven't really decided what i'm going to do about that situation but confidential information would you know when you're talking about the terms of control we talk about the confidentiality how how important it is that it should be kept a secret um you cannot use non-use um you cannot disclose and you cannot compete with that person Although certain jurisdictions in the U.S. are contesting this non-compete clause um, because they feel it kind of restricts, um, what's it called now, creativity, you know. And the contract will also go ahead to provide remedies in the event of a penalty for breach of contract, such as damages, injunction, or termination. Now, um, when Abdul sued, one of the... the, the, the reasons or grounds was breach of confidence yeah so he was also suing them for breach of confidence i'm trying to get yeah so 10 millionaire for breach of confidence of secret information and secret idea which the court based on available material never alluded to uh, which then reminds me of the Google Oracle case that started off as a patent case but ended up as a copyright case. So I really don't know. I mean, in the publication, it never said anything about the court 
considering this angle i wish if you have and someone can just share, share the judgment with me so i can you know be properly guided on what the court really did but that's about it for contract now what type of contract will it be a non-disclosure contract you know sometimes you, you, you might see a non-disclosure clause but when it's a proper document um named or titled non-disclosure agreement you now have to sign the agreement with people who will receive that information or may have the potential of using that confidential info information such as potential investors like in this case coca-cola buyers or collaborators ndas help you define what constitutes confidential information how long it should be kept um confidential what are the obligations and restrictions of the parties it also provides remedies and penalties for breach of NDA such as damages injunction you know but then it also has limitation what are the limitations and challenges for instance contracts and NDAs may not be enforceable in some jurisdiction or situation they may also be difficult to monitor or to prove in case of breach patent may not be granted for some type of invention and may be challenged by others for validity or infringement it may be expensive and time consuming to obtain and maintain as well trademark may not be registered for some type of brand or may be challenged by others for validity infringement non-use um what's the other one also, they may also be subject to fair use or parody i think i'm going to allude to the um dog toy case between jack Daniels, I did a, I did a, a, a podcast, a carousel, and a tweet about it, so you guys can please check it out, you know, just to be abreast. So you need to choose the best way to protect your confidential information based on specific circumstances and need. You may also need a combination of different ways to achieve um, a, a foolproof protection. You also need to consult your lawyer, not just any lawyer, consult your um intellectual property lawyer or an expert um, before making any decision regarding confidential information so what are those what are, sorry guys what are those elements hold on my laptop is acting up again right <laughs> so what are those um, elements in an action for and for sorry elements of an action for breach of confidence first the information must be confidential in nature very important and there must be an obligation of confidence that has been um determined by either a reasonable person test and limited purpose test and hold on ah okay and finally you also be considering finally you also be considering unauthorized use of the information if it's going to be an actual or threatening danger or threatening disclosure of the work in question we're going to move on to what is the difference between I think I was going to talk about that, but there briefly, how do you then deal with the breach of confidence? You need to identify and get evidence that your confidential information has been breached. Yeah. Then um, you need to also consider the thought of undisclosed information via thought of conversion, which is like the act of dealing with goods in a way that it interferes with the owner's rights to use and control the goods and doesn't need to be aware that the goods belong to someone else um e.g changing the nature of the goods or taking possession making it impossible for the owner to exercise the rights that's the ip right uh, ip right of possession or using the person's goods with the pe without their permission as we've seen in this case and one of the things that the court will consider is the intention of Coca-Cola to deprive Abdul Momini of possession or control of his work. And the remedy 
they are entitled to include damages. Now, Abdo will also be required to show that the misuse of the private information shared with Coca-Cola as he had a reasonable expectation of privacy. Now, what would be Coca-Cola's and um, Nigerian bottling company's defense? One, that, the, that the, com- the, the information was not confidential enough. Does that make sense? And that they had gotten the consent of Abdul. I think they alluded to that, that they got his consent to use his work and commercialize it and that he had given them a license. So, you know. Then, they also need to disclose that due to, that they had to disclose it due to a legitimate public interest and that the information was already available in the public domain. And then, finally, with regards to this whole breach of confidence conversation, Abdul will be entitled to an injunction against Coca-Cola and NBC, damages and destruction, compensation, delivery of an account of profit. Isn't that fantastic? And don't you also find this conversation on breach of confidence really, really insightful? Please let me know what you think. So my next line of conversation, I'm going to merge both the infringement of substantial similarity of Abdul's method in the copyright work and also um, infringements on the both the old act and the new act too. Under the old act, section 15 stated that infringement of a copyright would be where someone who without the license or authorization of the owner of the work does or cause any other person to do an act which is controlled by copyrights, exhibits in public, distribute by way of trade, offer for sale, hire, um, let's see now. So I'm going to refer to those in which I think alludes to our conversation. Then I also want to point out this section. I mean, I, I kind of stumbled upon it while i was you know talking about infringement so that's section 43 of the new copyright act 2022 it said in an action for infringement of copyright in a work whether civil or criminal the following action shall be presumed where such work has been registered under section 87 of the act that the copyright subsists in the work which is a sub- subject matter of an alleged infringement that the name appearing on the work purporting to be the name of the author is the name of such author that the name appearing on the work purporting to be that of the publisher or producer of the work and the name of such publisher or producer now in an instance where the, the author is dead that the work is an original work and that it was published or produced at the place and on the dates appearing on the work incredible right or would i say insightful right so one thing again that i I would say i really like about this new act is the fact that it really expanded most of the sections that were not so broad so for instance we're talking about infringement that actually blew as a breach of statutory duty um It states that the person whose right has been infringed upon shall be entitled to an act of damages, injunction, or any other remedy as the court may deem fit. Then the right of action under section 39 provides that notwithstanding the provision of this act or any law, no action for an infringement of copyright or any right under this act shall be shall be commenced or maintained by any person or organization who engages in the, engages in the business. Oh, sorry. I'm reading on the limit. Okay, yeah. Rem- limitations to the right of action. So if you engage in the business of negotiating or granting of license, um, this act applies to you as you are permitted. You're not permitted to commence any infringement act um, lawsuit. Um, if you also collect and distribute royalties in respect of the copyright work, or if you present 
50 owners of property. So this is more or less like for CMOs. So let's go into the one that really focuses on an action for infringement, which if you read side by side by section 15, it's a bit, let's say a bit, it's really detailed. So let's look at section 37, action for infringement. It states, subject to the provision of this act, infringement of copyright shall be actionable at the instance of the owner, assignee, or an exclusive licensee of the copyright in the court exercising jurisdiction in the place where the infringement occurred. So this case happened or took place in Quara State. And NBC and Coca-Cola were neither a licensee, but Abdul, in this instance, is the owner of the, the Ramadan timetable. Secondly, it stated, in the action of an infringement of copyright, the plaintiff shall be entitled to reliefs such as damages, injunctions, accounts, or as is available in any corresponding proceedings in respect of infringement of other property rights. Then sub three states that when an action for infringement of copyright is brought by the copyright owner or an exclusive licensee relates to an infringement in respect of which both have concurrent rights of action, the copyright owner or the exclusive licensee may not without the leave of court proceed with the action unless the other person is joined. Sub four states in an action of infringement of copyright where it is proved that there's an infringement that infringement was actually committed. By the time of the infringement, the, the defender was now aware or had no reasonable um, grounds to suspect that copyright subsisted in the work to which the action relates. The plaintiff shall not be entitled to them. So, if the, the defender come and say, "Ah, I was not aware that then this is not uh, this is a copyrighted work." nothing for you as a plaintiff so you need to do your due diligence to confirm that the defendant is actually in the know now it goes sub five states that a natural for infringement an infringement of copyright is proved or admitted and the court in which the action is brought is satisfied that the effective relief would not otherwise be available to the plaintiff the court in assessing damages for the infringement shall have the power to award such additional damages as it courts may consider appropriate in the circumstances having regard to the flagrancy of the infringement and any benefit shown to have been accrued of the, to the defendant by reason of the infringement i think this is something that if this case took place within you know this period that the new copyright act was enacted i think the court would have considered this section in while making this judgment and in a, any proceeding for infringement of copyright no order shall be made which require a completed okay this doesn't really apply this is for like completed and completed but it doesn't really apply now one other section again that stood out for me because i'm an arbitrator and also an adr practitioner so sub seven states any dispute arising from the exercise of a right under this act may be subject to arbitration and may be resolved by any means agreed to by the parties to the dispute why am I excited? We now have a new arbitration and mediation act, and it is also another detailed document that creatives should pay attention to. Um, I know in one of the definition clauses, it talks about what commercial dispute would be, and intellectual property was listed as an example of what a commercial dispute um, comprises of. You know, then. Top eight defines what an action would include. Said so an action in this in this section, an action includes a counterclaim and reference to the plaintiff or the defendant shall be construed accordingly. Fantastic, fantastic provision. Similar to section 15 as well, infringement of an act without authorization. You know, you do of course anything has to be done, you sell offer for sale or hire permit a place of public entertainment um, you know so one thing i notice is that why the former ad talks about distribute by way of trade this section this section doesn't really mention that's um section 
36 of the Copyright Act 2022 doesn't talk about distribution here. What it talks about is doing of an act, sale, offer for sale, make or has in his possession, um, imports, permit a place of public entertainment, permits within its premises reproduction of a copyright work, you know, performs. Then it goes further to say that the doing of any of these acts in shall be in respect of the whole or substantial part of the work, either in its original form or in any form recognizably derived from the original. Now, here is my copyright tips for corporates or directors. So, on that section 46, sub 3, it defines a body corporate to be either a firm or other associations of person and a director to be in relation to a firm which includes a partner in the firm. Now, looking at um, Coca-Cola, let's analyze how offenses by an offense, a copyright offense by bodies corporate, how the law will look at it. First, where under section 46 sub 1 states that where an offense was committed by a body corporate, the body corporate and its principal officers are deemed to have committed the offense as well. They are also liable to be proceeded against and punished accordingly provided that nothing contained in this section shall render any person liable to any punishment if he proves that the offense was committed without his knowledge or that he exercised due diligence to prevent the commission of the offense then subsection 2 states that where an offense under subsection 1 has been committed by a body copy and it is proved that the offense was committed with the consent or connivance of any director, manager, secretary, or any other officer of the body corporate, such director, manager, secretary, or other officer shall be deemed to have committed the offense and shall be liable to be proceeded against and punished accordingly. So why you may be suing NBC and why you may be suing NBC, it will also be in your best interest to consider suing the directors or manager or secretary because if they were actually aware of the offense, then they should be held liable and not just the company. I mean, someone has to be held liable, but then again, that will also depend on what the person signed, you know, to. Yes, I'm just trying to confirm that we have a definition of what qualifies as an offense. Oh, no, it doesn't. So what what um, sub 103 states that the Federal High Court has or shall have exclusive jurisdiction for the trial of offenses and civil action arising from this act, you know yeah so that's that's like my free tip for body corporates like mbc and managers and directors and secretaries and firms <laughs> yeah before i conclude so to conclude our conversation if you are a body corporate such as mbc or coca-cola and it's been found that you use a copyrighted work without authorization, consent, and permission in Nigeria. You may face both civil and criminal consequences, and your officers may also be held personally liable if they were involved in the infringement. Now, one of the beauty about this case is that it's going to show the relationship and interplay of copyright protection of confidential information, which both enjoy automatic protection for the moment they are created. And also the fact that copyright owners must secure their intellectual property rights by exploring 
security measures such as encrypt encrypted password encryptions password access control to safeguard their works by relying on the technological protection measures as provided for under section 50 sub 1 which reads as follows no person shall knowingly circumvent a technological protection measures that effectively protect that effectively protects access to a work protected under this act now sub 3 reads as follows so sub, sub 3 defines what a technology protection measure should, should be which means a technology device a product or component incorporated in the work which is designed to effectively prevent or inhibit the infringement of any copyright or related right while circumventing a technological protection measures will mean you um, using means to avoid or bypass or remove deactivate decrypt or otherwise impairing the technological protection measures now sub c of section paragraph c of subsection 3 states that a technological protection measures effectively protects a work under the act if the measures in the ordinary course of the operation controls access to the work provided under the act or prevents or restrict acts in respect of the work which are not authorized by the author Remember that copyright owners enjoy a bundle of exclusive rights and it's only when they give you the consent via a license on assignment or maybe they sell it that you can exercise um, those rights. So if uh, if you're not authorized by the author consent or permitted by law, whereby you know, the copyright commission might step in depending on whether there's a special provision because you own, say, a museum, a gallery or a visually impaired person, then this section does not extend to those measures which in normal course of operation only control access to work for non-infringing purposes. Then sub section 52 sub 1. Hold on, I think I just missed it. <laughs> yeah, 52 sub 1 says that a person whose right is valid under section 50 or 50, 51 may institute an action before a court of competent jurisdiction, which in this case is a federal high court, to seek redress for damages, account, or injunction as are available to a plaintiff in any similar proceeding in respect of infringing and, okay, infringing of other proprietary right. Yeah. So one of that thing that I also failed or forgot to allude to in the course of my conversation is with regards to the you know after you've discovered that there's an alleged infringement or violation of your work and the distribution of the profit may rely on whether or not the work was used in a particular situation in accordance with the fair dealing standard depending on the following principles so the fair dealing standard can be found on that section 20 I, yeah <laughs> it needs to be found on that section 20 so i'm trying to get there so i can read it for you guys you know do you properly guide it yeah here so section 20 talks about exceptions to copyright so you have the general exception which is that um under the act or so for all the eligible works in respect of the work it does not include the right to control any of the acts specified by way of fed and for people such as private use so coca-cola needs to show us whether the the use of the romana was for private use i mean it wasn't right was it for parody satire uh was it caricature past past itche here forgive me a big criticism review of the reporting of current events i mean they're in report, re reporting the current events so no subject to the to the condition that if they use this public it shall well practicable be accompanied by an acknowledgement of the title of the work and it's also except where the work is incidentally included in the broadcast and that was not the case here they never for once acknowledge abdul's contribution in the creation of the calendar now it goes for that to say that before Provided that in determining whether the use of the work in any particular case is fair dealing, the following factors 
such as the purpose and character of his usage of the Ramadan timetable for breaking of fast, the nature of the work, amount and substantial substantiality of the portion used in relation to the work as a whole and effect of the use upon the potential market or value of the work so this can also be categorized or considered when you're talking about how you calculate profit made from an unauthorized use of a work mm -hmm. i hope i hope that makes sense me, it does. I mean, then my next contribution will be that the party who whose copyright and confidential information was shared without consent can apply for either. So the party who the co copyright and confidential information was shared to can apply. For either an exclusive or non-exclusive license to use the work in question but that never happened in this case instead they were stating that abdul actually gave them a license you know which is kind of weird not true as well then the ip owner can use copyright to protect or yeah, to protect his confidential information and also to produce, publish, distribute, as we saw in this case today. So another uh, recommendation for me would be that IP owners and copyright owners can also consider copyright registration as provided for under section 87, sub 2 which states that a person may apply in the prescribed manner to the commission to register a work that is eligible as provided for in section two under the act and then sub for which you know kind of collaborates why you need to do that is that the register shall at first instance be evidence of the work and the particulars entered in the register and may extract from the register certified by the commission shall be admissible in evidence in all proceeding without further proof or production of the original so if, if someone is doubting the originality of your work you just need to go to the Nigerian Copyright Commission and get a certified copy to prove that this is the original you know so I think that's kudos or oh, that's a well uh, <laughs> introduced provision then you can also tap into the value of your intellectual property which is a creator the 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 rights um which, which gives you values such as market exclusivity opportunity to sell opportunity to buy opportunity to license and also enhance the commercial value of your work that you've created copyright owners must also be proactive in protecting their rights by identifying um what can help an IP owner in this digital area by incorporating smart contracts, exploring technological protection measures, which I talked about earlier, um, timely registration of the work. You need to also mo monitor the marketplace by using IP lawyers or experts or law firms or companies that have been set up to help IP owners to manage and monitor their works in the market. You can also explore take down proceedings or border enforcement, you know, for counterfeited literary work or uh, pirated literary works, as the case may be, you can also opt to send a cease and desist letter. Um, because I haven't seen the judgment, I, I don't know. And also the publication did not state that um, Abdul's lawyer had sent a cease and desist letter to Coca-Cola as well. Um, you can take legal proceedings such as litigating. And also, alternatively, sensitize the public or your consumers about your work. Alternatively, you can sign an NDA or non complete agreement, but make sure that you have completed the registration of your copyrighted work or intellectual property. Then, finally, verify the information and verify that the information shared is in compliance with data protection and privacy laws of Nigeria, um, C section 26 and section 30 of the Data Protection Act 2023. 
So one good thing again that Buhari did for us was signing relevant law and also President Tinubu as well. And I think he's giving kudos for, you know, all the signings he had been doing. But I'm just trying to draw up, yeah, trying to bring up the Mr. Protection Act to read section 26, which talks about the consent that you need from the data subject in, in question and also um hold on <laughs> and also okay this is taking me a lot a lot more time than i anticipated but we are here yeah and then section 30 talks about sensitive personal data so those information that you share, do you consider them to be sensitive personal data that you shared with a third party such as Coca-Cola? So reading section 26, it says, a data controller shall bear the burden of proof for establishing a data subject's consent um, in determining whether the consent was freely and intentionally given account to be taken or whether the performance of a contract, including the provision of a service in is conditional or consent to the processing of personal data that is not necessary for the performance of the contract. Silence or inactivity of the data subject shall not constitute consent. Now, why this kind of stood out for me again was I was, I think it's about the, I read one case anyway, I saw a video about it where, you know, it was assumed that silence meant that the person agreed to the contract and it was a bit, it was a shame. I don't know. Well, subsection 7 talks about consent shall be affirmative and not based on pre-elected confirmation and may be provided in writing orally or through <sighs> or through electronic means while section 30 of the data protection act 2023 talks about sensitive personal data sub one reads without prejudice to the principle set out in this act a data controller or data processor shall not process or permit a data processor to process on his behalf sensitive personal data unless the data subject has given and not withdrawn consent um, so why i'm alluding to this is the fact that copyright or intellectual property relies solely on consent and without consent you really cannot do much without consent you can't do much you need consent to be able to progress um, and also to make impact uh, within the creative space you can't exclude um, you can't exclude the general public but then you have the final say on how you can address questions as to whether the basis identified could be in relation to, you know, an express copyright license that can let can legitimately be the basis for engaging the process of impl implications of copyright um, licenses. Um, again, a copyright owner's power to consent is um, gives the copyright owner the the right to act out on their own volition in relation to the copyright work is also their source of power um, to enable them give that consent that is being demanded for um, as long as they are the owner of the copyright work in question. So, yeah. And so if you're reading that section just because of subsection one and all its, it's provisions and you know and that that's it so i want to thank all my ip friends for tuning in to listen to this episode if it's long i apologize but i had to do it <laughs> i do hope that you enjoyed and you learned something new if you have any comments or questions please feel free to contact um me via our email ipseriesinfo at gmail.com or at ipseries underscore with underscore etherado esq we also on Twitter at IPCB1, also on Instagram, sorry, oh, on Facebook as well. 
and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast for more episodes on intellectual property law and practice until next time stay safe and stay creative goodbye